Hi, Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist, and today I'm going to watercolor paint this drawing I did of sea spray looking up at the stars, making thousands and thousands of wishes. Let's get started right now. And there we are. So, let me get my mic in a good place. What are we working with? Well, I've got a drawing, uh, an inked drawing of Sea Spray, the Generation 1 Transformer, sitting on a cliffside looking up at the stars, um, on a piece of Canson watercolor paper. It was penciled in Clip Studio Paint, inked with brush pens, and uh, well, penciled in Clip Studio Paint, printed out on the Canson watercolor paper, inked with brush pens, and now I'm going to use my watercolors, and I also have some watercolor crayons that I might wind up using for this, which are... Um, I use these a lot in my streams in the past. They're, they're just like, they work like crayons, but they are water soluble and they blend like watercolors. So, um, and they, they tend to be very rich and vibrant in color. So, time to get started. Oh, you'll also notice that I used drawing gum over top of sea spray in the cliff in the water because I want to do a wash on this sky. I've not done this before and I should have gotten a bigger brush. I really should have. That's okay. We'll work with what we've got. That's the whole purpose of these little experiments that I'm doing. So I'm going to do first. Let's see, what should I do first? I think I should mix my sky colors first, right? Right? Or should I wet the paper first? I think I should wet the paper. Let's wet the paper. So, if you're not used to, if you're not familiar with watercoloring, and I'm not that familiar. Well, I've been doing this a couple of years now. Um, and really, in the spirit of play, I haven't been like doing like professional watercolor painting that people put up at auction or anything. But um, yeah, the, the blue stuff that I got over top of the sea spray is a masking fluid. It's protecting it from any of this uh, water or other pigmentation from getting onto that those parts of the canvas, which if you're familiar with Photoshop, and I imagine a lot of you are, like using masking, quick masks, masking layers, right? I can't hardly see what I'm doing here because I'm just working with water. I want to make sure I'm getting this nice and wet. Hey, what's going on? Overhead camera just vanished. I'm having some issues with uh, OBS Ninja in Safari on my old iPhone. So I'll just have to occasionally tap the screen so it doesn't go to sleep on me. I'm going to get this really wet because I want... Oh, good question, um, Rachel. Yeah, how do you apply it? It's a couple different ways. Um, I finally read the instructions on this, and I was like, oh my gosh, good doy. Because I would use just like an old junky brush to apply it, and as you probably discovered, this stuff is like glue. It turns into rubber really fast, so it ruins the brush. And it said, hey, if you don't want to ruin your brushes, the thing you can do is wet the brush and put a little bit of soap in the brush. So I just took like some soft soap, right? and some water just mixed it in the brush. And then when I dip the brush in and apply it with just like a paintbrush, the stuff washes right out of the brush. And once I did that, I was like, my gosh, why wasn't I doing that a long time ago? Because this stuff is actually really cool to use. Okay, nice wet sky. Now let's start dropping in some colors here and working really fast because my canvas is drying as I talk to you. I might not talk a whole lot right now while I do this part because I want to work super fast. But I will be glad to entertain any questions that you have while I'm going. Thanks for showing up, everybody. I 
Thanks for hanging out with me while I work on, you know, more watercolor drawings. So I, di I did a, um, a change in format. I don't know if anybody's noticed this, but I used to, you know, as of last week, I was live streaming Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, but I decided to change gears because um, it was announced that I have, I'm working on a new middle grade graphic novel. Middle grade meaning, you know, sixth, fifth and sixth grade, not middle grade as in low quality. Somebody called me out on that. I'm like, oh, no, it's, your stuff isn't middle grade. It's top of the line. Well, thank you very much for saying that. It's not what I meant. Um, anyway. Um, and I can't share the process or progress on that. I, at least I can't share a lot of it. So I really should have used a bigger brush. <laughs> oh, I, you know what I did? I went for a walk just before this live stream, thinking like, I have everything set up. And then I got in my studio and I realized, oh, I don't have everything set up. <laughs> anyway, so I can't do as much public work about studying my characters or practicing the uh, different techniques for the new book, Baron Von Baer, which you can find out more about at baronvonbaer.com. I'll take you to the landing page where the information about like no, I should have taped this down too. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get some black in here while this is now still nice and wet. Um, anyway, so that means, like, I wanted to keep live streaming. What am I going to live stream if I can't work, you know, share the pro progress of my new book? So all Bear Von Bear live streams are now moved to Patreon only on the same time on Thursdays, Thursdays at 10 a.m., but um, my public stream on Tuesdays, I thought, well, how about we just focus on your favorite thing to draw, Jersey, which is cute characters being brave. So I started a, a wish list of like, okay, what, what are my favorite cute, brave characters? And I'm doing a series where every Tuesday I will paint or ink a drawing of a cute, brave character. And there goes my... Okay. Stay awake, camera. It'd be a bit of a juggling act today. I'm trying to make this sky work. I really need a bigger brush. Should have got a bigger brush out. I have a bigger brush. Can I, can I work with this to make it look like there's clouds? <laughs> Mix some purple with that black. And let's do this. Here we go. You can see me mixing. Remember, bring all the brush sizes when you're doing a bigger painting. This isn't actually that big of a painting, but I think I'll leave that be for now. Oh, I want to blend it a little bit more, but I can't. I'm going to need to wait for this to dry before I can move on to the next part. This time I have a contingency though. I may not have brought a big enough brush, but I do have a second drawing I can work on. Cause I thought in case this one went too fast, I should have a backup drawing. So this is to also say, for those of you who enjoy these live streams, if there's any cute, brave characters that you would like to see me draw, I would be glad to, uh, you know, you can comment or you can send me a message, an email, just, just my name at gmail.com. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside for a second. And I'd be glad to take them on as a future drawing. So what I did as a backup is I have a quick little drawing of a Robert Burble from Thundercats. I don't know how easy it is to see it. But it's 
Robert Burble, it's Robert Bill con contemplating a piece of candy fruit. So I'll work on that while that dries. Because this is live. It's not like one of those baking shows where you can do the thing where you like pull out the thing out of the oven and whatnot. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Wouldn't that be something if I got two drawings done today in one hour? Possible. My paints for a second here. I know um, I've talked about this a lot in a lot of places, but I'm a big fan of children's storytelling that uses appropriate kid logic. I feel like Dogman is a good example of what I'm talking about when it comes to kid logic, right? If you've ever read that comic, it, it really understands how children think. And I feel like Thundercats is a good example of a television show that had like a lot of appropriate kid logic where you have these adorable robot bears who are kind of like implacable and creepy at the same time. And they have groves of trees that grow different kind of fruit, meat fruit, veggie fruit, and candy fruit, right? It sounds like the, like as if somebody was listening in on a conversation on a playground when they came up with those ideas. And that's one of the reasons I love them so much. But mostly, I mean, it's, what is it? The third episode of the Thundercast TV show? It's just called Burbles. And what I also love about them is the story where they're introduced, where they're being harassed by these creatures called the Trollegs who wreck up their village and steal all their different fruits. Um, and the Royal Bear Burbles always use, just use these stun darts to try to stop them, but it never works. And Lionel says, you know, it's like, well, those stunt arts aren't doing much good. And Robert Bill, leader, says, leader of the Burbles says, no, they never do. He's like, well, then why do you use them? And he says, well, we wouldn't want to hurt anybody. And then Lionel says, well, then why not just let the child just walk into the village and take the Robert Burble fruit? He says, why? And Robert Bill responds, what, and we behave like cowards? I love that idea of like acknowledging the fact that, yeah, we have a, a duty to defend what's ours, but can we do it gently? And then even after Lionel repels the Trollogs, Robert Bill's like, oh, the poor Trollogs. And Lionel's like, why would you feel sorry for him? It's like, well, we find out that the Trollogs are actually working for a bigger bully yet. And I'm also a super sucker for stories where the person who acts the worst needs our help the most. I am such a, light, a soft touch for that kind of story. You don't have to do much else that of any merit in there as long as you have that in there. Okay. I think I'm using the wrong pen. This is the pen I usually like to use for inking. He has a bigger brush. 
There we go. Get more line value out of this one. Looks like my sea spray painting is almost dry. I'll be able to go back to that in a second. Lesson learned for next time. If I do another painting with like a big wash like that, and I'll do the wash ahead of time. Okay, break out the microns for this next part. I just got my eyes tested yesterday. And I tell you what, I am excited about getting new glasses that will let me see this stuff up close again. Because this is almost a blur right now. That is frustrating. On the one hand, it doesn't let me get precious about the drawing. But on the other hand, it's like, man, I'd like to see what I'm doing. <laughs> What a weird design these creatures have. Don't get me wrong, I love it. But it's super weird. Almost done. And then I can move back to working on sea spray. There we go. Robe Bear Bill contemplating a piece of candy fruit. Inked on watercolor paper, ready for painting next week. Next Tuesday, that's what I'll be working on. Let's get back to sea spray. Still a little damp. And I think what I'm going to do, what I might do to close this one out. Ooh, dare I? Dare I use the watercolor crayons? What do I got here? Indigo. And purple. Oof. Let's try it. Let's do the top of the sky. Because, I mean, the idea was I wanted it to be sunset, so... Very lightly scrubbing with my crayon. Oh, my camera stopped again. Gosh darn it. I don't know what I'm going to do with the OBS Ninja. I'm going to have to switch back to using NDI. Okay. Okay. 
go with there we go start the video there we are we're back my second camera can handle it why can't you iphone okay so pens aside That's showing up. Yeah, it's showing up. Look how much more vibrant that color is. Mm. Am I running out of water? Oh, goodness gracious, I am. I was not prepared for today. I just wasn't. You know what? Not every painting has to be perfect. I can live with one or two lessons learned. Now, when I was in watercolor class, I remember what we would do is we'd break out hair dryers for this part. That's going to be good enough. Now I'm going to peel up some of the, do the water next. Okay. So while that dries, I'm going to work over here. I'm going to start peeling up the drying gum. Very gently, just to hopefully not pull up any of my ink lines. That's happened before, or paper. That's off. I'm just going to roll up the masking fluid up off the cliff. So I can just paint the water and the cliff right now. And I'll get the sea spray last. How long have I been going? 24 minutes. So this is the part of the drawing where I really question what I'm, what I'm doing here. Do I even know what I'm doing here? No, I don't. And actually, I'm kind of grateful to be, you know, modeling this right now is this idea that every drawing, every project I do, I often don't have a clue what's really going to happen. Until I get in there and do it. I mean, I know that part of this is me relying on some intuition of past experiences drawing things. I mean, I've been drawing stuff for a long time, so I know that my intuition can help me out here. 
I'm not worried about that as much. But there is a sense of like, is this even coming together? I don't know. And you're looking at it right now. This is me going, you know. I think I'm going to put in some matter blue in here. This blue is coming out really bright. Bring up some of that indigo from the bottom. Look at how bright that blue is, man. That's some bright blue water. Oops, oops, oops. Don't touch the edges of your paper. <laughs> Looks like unpolluted water. I appreciate that. I'm going to try to get a, like, a little bit. It got washed out there. I'm going to try to fill that in if I can. Just by taking a little bit of my blue crayon. Another piece of paper. Saturate my brush. Okay, now to do the cliff side. Well, this is still, well, this is all drying. I might just try to soak up a tiny bit of that red there. All right, cliff side. What do we do with you? You know what else I'm going to do? I should have realized. I'm going to put a little bit of like a reflection of the sunset on that cliff side. There we go. Oh, I didn't know that about you, Rachel, that you you draw with your left hand, but you do everything with your right arm. That is a, a fascinating 
discovery through the compensation of switching dexterities. So is it, Rachel, is it something where it's like only um, like fine motor skill stuff gets done with the left hand and like more general stuff? Like, like for instance, like, oh, sports using a mouse, all that stuff with right arm. Interesting. I would be curious to see what's going on in that noggin of yours when you're doing that. Like, how does your brain working out that compensation, right? Mixing up a brown purple now. Which which watch does the go? Uh, which which watch? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like talking like Casablanca sweetness. Which watch? Uh, which arm does the watch go on? You knew what I was going to ask. Or which pocket does the pocket watch go in, for that matter? I'm just taking pain away now when I do that. Gosh darn it. I'll wait till that's dry. I'm getting impatient with my painting. I keep looking over here for my camera. I moved it. It's there now. I'm just continuing, still continuing to uh, experiment with my live streaming layout. Okay. Let's clean off the rest of Sea Spray and see if we can't finish coloring him. Hmm. What did I do here? Get these little bits of gummy mess. Throw in the garbage. Oh, I didn't quite get everywhere. I didn't perfectly mask sea spray. See, look at that. There's like little bits of paint on him. Not insurmountable. We can figure this out. We can figure this out. So what I'll do is do my small brush out. See if I can throw about some of that color. Pick it up. I'm more worried about it up here because this is where we got a lot of yellow is going to happen. Once again, everybody, I point you to the fact or to the idea that there are many times in a drawing where I have no idea if it's going to turn out at all. So let's see if you can see what I've got going on here. See, some of the black paint that I was doing in the sky earlier came through. I didn't quite mask it perfectly. So right now I'm trying to wet that paint down and lift it out. Same with this footy over here. Yeah. 
Now I'm going to use a lot of dark colors on them anyway, so I'm not super worried about it, but you know, this isn't going exactly as I'd hoped. Okay. Yeah, I really wish I would have done something. You know what I could do at the end of this? I could go in there with a black marker and put in like a fade with like a Sharpie or with even with my brush pens to make this pure black up there. That would work. And that might save some of this. Okay, let's get going with getting that sunset reflection on old sea spray here. Your face, is, this is already all yellow. I'm still gonna mix up a, a like a yellowish, dark dark yellow to go behind him. Let's do that right now. Uh, yellow. There you are. Mix up some yellow. And grab some purple from up yonder. I just go in right there and just You know what I mean about it like could be dark anyway so it's not like I have to worry too much about where that black ink got on there I go in there with like a little bit of darker color too beyond that. Okay, let's mix up our blue. As a matter of fact, what I'm what I'm gonna do, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in with this because this blue is just so impossibly bright. I should look up a picture of sea spray real quick just to make sure I got his color scheme right. Sea spray G1. Okay. Okay. Yeah. His, his torso is white. That's what I thought. All right. I get a little bit of the purple in there. Even a little bit of indigo.
try to do something wild here. I'm going to try to put some white gouache over top of some of that yellow on sea spray here. To brighten up those edges just a tiny bit. I know I'm going bananas over here. Ah, but not that, not that, not that. I could, depending on how things go with the rest of this drying, even break out the old Uniball Sino, right? Okay, let's figure out what we're going to do for that shading behind old sea spray. Let, let's test this out first. That's too, I need some more gray in there. Let's do, well, I'll do a little bit more mixing on camera and then I'll switch it. Okay, I think that's good. All right. So you can see it a little bit more close. So in case you're wondering why this image why sea spray looking up at the stars? This actually comes from Transformers episode called Sea Change, which I talked about on the Four Million Years Later podcast, four million years later .com. And in that episode, we discover that Sea Spray, the Autobots' naval tactician, is a dreamer. He wishes on every star at night. And we don't know what his wish is, but we get a hint about it because later on he meets a romantic interest. Whoop, 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 whoop. Get out of there. Don't do that. We find out that Sea Spray is like an awfully romantic Autobot. And so there's a scene at the beginning of the episode where like he's literally cat wishing on every star and Bumblebee's like grabbing by them and going like, come on, can we go home? You can't wish on every star. Sea Spray thinks you can. And so finding out that this, this tough little naval tactician has like a deep vulnerability in that he feels alone and craves affection really endeared him to me. in a way that I don't think I was ready to be endeared to him when I was 11. So when I thought of cute, brave characters, his name made the list. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to draw Sea Spray, what's he going to be doing? I'm not going to draw him in an awesome action pose. That's for sure. He's going to be wishing on stars. Because being cute and brave doesn't always mean that you're ready for action. Being cute and brave means that you uh, are emotionally intelligent, and capable of introspection and growth. It takes a lot of bravery to grow, right? I mean, I don't want to sound too much like Mr. Rogers, but I mean, actually, I can think of a lot worse things than sounding like Mr. Rogers. But yeah, I think I think ten year old Jersey would have needed to hear, would have been helpful for him to hear that courage is also growing. Or it takes courage to grow. Okay. I think what I might try to do 
is put some that white pen on him a little bit. Yeah, when I was a little kid, I mean, a lot of this stuff kind of, you know, like people talk about like, oh, firing things over kids' heads. I think some of the that kind of stuff, like that kind of character trait, that kind of character growth was lost on me as a child. Because I was just thinking, oh, he turns into a hovercraft, he talks like Merman from He-Man, and he's kind of tough. I didn't pick up on... I mean, I, I watched the episode. I remember watching it as a kid, but I don't remember reacting in any way to him wishing on every star. Okay. Okay. There we go. I think if I get a marker now, let's see if I got a, if I have a, a, an appropriate Sharpie or I might just got to break out and just annihilate one of my brush pens, which I'm okay with doing. I've got refills because actually I'm not super excited about using a Sharpie on these paintings. Tell you the truth. Well, let's see what we can do with the good old brush pen to like darken some of this sky. Charge up the pen, get a lot of ink in there. There we go. And then I'm going to put in stars when I'm done. This is not going to be the most uh, efficient way to fill in these blacks. But it is going to give me a little bit of control over if I want to keep any of that purple behind it. Now I break out my dry brush pen for some of the stuff at the end. So memo to me, going forward for these Tuesday streams, I think I'm going to need to have a little bit more uh, equipment than I typically have. Like I'm working right now with basically my travel kit. But I think I might have to switch it up to doing some more like actual studio setup, uh, studio equipment, meaning like, you know, all my watercolor brushes and a jar of water and and some bigger pens because my travel setup is really more or less to um, do tiny drawings. This drawing isn't, I wouldn't call this drawing big, but there's a lot of space that I have to fill in this that I normally wouldn't have to. And this would be a lot easier if I had a bigger ink brush and a bottle of ink nearby, which I have right behind that wall, but because I didn't prepare today. Dry right, brush, your turn. You're too dry.
All right, don't tell anybody I'm doing this. I'm getting a sharp edge just for some of these areas here. Are you too dry too? My kingdom for a Sharpie. You're going in the garbage, Sharpie. Oh, you're just... <laughs> Fat lot of good that one does me. My goodness. Almost like the painting's telling me, don't use Sharpies on me. All right, I won't, I won't, I won't. Okay. Now it's time for stars. And then this one might be as done as I'm going to make it today. Now this takes me back. My early days as a cartoonist. Back when we did all the art on the boards. And I would sit here with a... I didn't have a whiteout pen like this, but what I did have was... And I'm sure you've seen them. They, uh, it's like a rectangular shaped blue white out pen. It's like, it's pretty thick. I don't think I have one in here. No, but it's like, it's like, it's like the shape of like, like a giant pink pearl eraser. And then it has like a little narrow tip. And I remember sitting there whenever I would do space scenes in any of my books doing this. I'm trying to remember to do like, whoops, don't put your hand where you just drew. Um, do little clusters. Try to make sure to do the different sizes. And I had friends growing up when we'd make comics together, they would do like the toothbrush thing, a little bit of white paint, a toothbrush, go flick. It looked too spattery. I always, I don't know. Are we done? Might be. Might be done. I think I'm going to put a little bit more shading on... How much time do I have? I have seven minutes, so I'm going to put a little bit more shading on his back. Okay, so... I got, this is something I need to be more mindful about and remind myself to do when I'm doing these is when we're at the seven minute mark, say, if you enjoyed this video, if you like watching me do this, um, a great thing you could do is give it a thumbs up, give the video a thumbs up wherever you're watching it. Or if you are watching it on Twitch and you can't give a thumbs up, you're already following me, you know, you could link to it, tell a friend about it. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe. Thanks to everybody who has subscribed. Um, there's another stream on Thursday. But that one is only on my Patreon. So you have to go to patreon.com slash jersey to see it. It's at 10 a.m. Thursday. And that's going to be behind the scenes stuff for the new Baron Von Bear project. Stuff I cannot show to anybody else. A little bit darker on his back. A little bit darker. Uh, I got to look into how to get, how to receive bits. Cause I've, I've been reading about it and you know, this is me, Rachel, shame on me. I'm, I'm, I'm broadcasting in a commons where I haven't observed or read all of the customs. So I understand that bits are some kind of form of digital currency that is exchanged on Twitch and I really ought to bone up on it so I can 
like you said, accept bits. I will read about it. You don't have to tell me. It's not your job. It is not your job to educate me on this. This is my job to go and watch some YouTube videos and read some things about how this stuff works. I think... I think I got a drawing done. Actually, I got two. Two drawings, because I also inked up Robert Bill. Um, one more reminder to everybody. Oh, by the way, this I'm going to probably put this in my Etsy. So I'm going to have a new uh, original drawing section in Etsy, so you can get uh, these paintings. It's at Tiny Astronaut. That, that's the Etsy account. Tinyastronaut.com will get you there. Um, I think I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me and, and watching, and I'll be back uh, publicly next Tuesday. And once again, if you want to watch the Thursday stream, it'll be at patreon.com slash jersey. So till next time, everybody, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for interacting and keeping me company while I do these little experiments. And until next time, I have been Jersey Drozd, rss.jdrozd.com for everything I do. Okay, bye.